All right. Good morning. So this is basically Mystery Babylon for dummies. And, uh, and there's other, there's other prophetic names mentioned in Mas Mystery Babylon. So now Mystery Babylon is written of in Isaiah 47 and 48. And in there, it includes Judah. In Isaiah 51, especially, maybe 50, 51, Mystery Babylon. Now, people might say, oh, it's just a city. But you'll see in Jeremiah's account that Mystery Babylon, the great city, has many cities. See, the problem with people is they don't have listening ears. The problem is, is that they just want to avoid the bad prophecies instead of delving into them and correcting themselves they just they want to uh you know they want the quick fix they want to feel comfortable and then they want to continue on with their life as though nothing's going on and in their lightness the daughters that uh that dwell at ease in zion so on and so forth i should have mentioned zion or i did mention zion in the title as well zion will escape from this so it's already written it's already done how it's going to happen is by the foolishness of preaching. So there's a lot of details to this story. So I'm going to try to just put it in a, a story format. I'm not going to go into the scriptures too, too much. I may make some references. I may read the odd thing to you just to put it in perspective. But the United States of America is 100% mystery Babylon. The great whore and her many daughters are the church. So... God is holding that whole nation responsible for all the many years that they've been worshiping Christmas trees and many other things and pushing their, you know, their coliseums and so on and so forth and all their, all their covetousness and all their merchandise and um, they're responsible for many souls. They've tried to influence their way of life onto the whole entire world Everybody knows who they are. They are the great nation that runs the world. All the currency is through them. This is that they sit a queen, so they don't think anything could ever happen to them. They actually think that they're the bride, the church. The great whore and her many daughters is basically the Catholic Church and all the Protestant sluts that are whoring with. They they have the spirit of whoredom, whoredom slut. Okay, I, I'm using sharper words because these people don't listen, you know, and they expect to be. Uh, spoken to in a certain way, yet they're the ones that God is holding responsible for deceiving the world. So he's giving them an opportunity. It's not a very big opportunity because he raises up a watchman from the north and this is what he looks like. And they want to see something much bigger and better. But God's a funny guy and he's going to laugh at them, the disobedient. So Inside Mystery Babylon, and this is all through prophecy, Habakkuk, Acts 13, um, Revelation 17 and 18. You should be writing these things down and studying them out. If you want to live, I would suggest that you do this because it's right around the corner. I've been doing this for a long time. I've put forth all the wisdom that God has given me and nobody, nobody's been able to call me a liar and get away with it. So you have the opportunity to review videos that I've made on YouTube, AKA Watchman Wake Up, that's up to you. It doesn't really bother me either way because I'm fed up with you. You are stiff necked people that don't listen and your warning, part of the Watchman's warning is just to establish when it happens, your punishment. And then you're gonna know that there was a prophet in your midst. So once you study prophecy, it's really not that hard to, to see the spiritual attributes of all different kinds of people it tells this book tells you in detail what every single person is going to do the sins of women are laid out like a sidewalk for you to clearly see and they will not listen whatsoever they have the people when you do show them the things that god hates and the punishment that's coming is atrocious i feel sorry for women because of course every man has compassion for the weaker vessel but they are stubborn arrogant Jezebels that will not listen to God's God. That's why it's it's a rare, 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 rare jewel to God that a woman that will actually listen to his instruction towards her. 
had the women listened, the families would have been a lot better. Because had they had a woman taken on her role as a woman according to God's will, the men would have stayed in check because God would have been with that woman and their husbands would have been sanctified. But they don't trust God. They got to do it their own way. And they go right to the devil and they're deceived. This is the end, okay? This is the generation of God's wrath. So even if you don't like what I'm saying to you right now, you're likely going to experience it. So... It's those who tremble at God's word that will repent and they will change their, their ways and they will seek after God's ways and be saved. So what should I start with first? Let's start with Ephraim because in the book of Hosea, it's going to tell you this story. First of all, it tells them to marry a woman of a harlot, okay? And then it proceeds on to start explaining Jacob, or not Jacob, but uh, Judah and Ephraim, where they dwell together. Now, in God's law, it's, it is progressive. So when Yeshua spoke in parables, he was, those parables were explaining what the prophets had already said. And Yeshua has already said that you uh, enter into the work of the prophets, reap what they sow together, you rejoice. You prophesy in the name of a disciple, you will no wise lose your reward. You see, these are the promises that he made, and he wanted you to listen. So if you really listen to your Messiah, and you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, which means you meditate upon his prophecy, really, that's what it means. And especially today, say 50 years ago, not so big of a deal. But it was because it was not so big of a deal back 50 years ago that the, those fathers taught us bad bad manners when it comes to God. So nobody's really taking this seriously. And the Bible tells you that. It tells you that they take it as a light thing, that the daughters of Zion are at ease. And it's all described. So I mean, when you know prophecy, you can sit here from your watchtower and you can just see what everybody's doing just by how they flap their gums. And they have no idea what the book says. I see it all the time. They open their mouth and they have no clue what they're saying because they really haven't studied the book. And now Ephraim has appointed, okay? This is the... This is the appointed thing for Ephraim to do. Or should I get into Judah first? Okay. Judah is going to put forth a doctrine in the Messianic. He's going to put forth a doctrine that there is not two houses of Israel. All this Zionist stuff that's going on with, with uh, the land of Israel right now, that's really only the land of Judea. Okay? It's not... But because everybody doesn't get the Bible and they can't see the the wickedness that Judah does, they can't understand what's really going on over there. So they believe these lies that Judah puts forth, like Israel's become a nation in one day. That is not what that's talking about. Judah is Judah, okay? That's only two piddly little tribes out of 12. That's Judah and Benjamin. We were joined together when Solomon's days, there was a separation because of the sins of Solomon. And they've always been separated, and they're not. The restoration of the kingdom is not to happen until the end. So, where are the ten tribes? They're scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth. So, when you see the Torah movement going on right now, that's what it is. Now, I'm going to give you. So, Judah's doing this. So, Judah is more treacherous than backslidden Israel. You can see this if you look at Jeremiah, it, and if you look at Hosea as well. Now, Ephraim and Judah are appointed to go into tribulation. <gasps> well, they were on, they were, this is the part, okay, where many are called and few are chosen. Now, Yeshua magnified the law and made it honorable and says, don't stone your neighbor. I'm ending sacrificial law. I'm going to give myself as the, as the only pure sacrifice for sin. So, that's what he did. And he magnified the law and says, now everybody go out, just like the apostles listened, and they went and spread the gospel, teaching everything that the Messiah taught. So what did he teach? He, he taught you to enter into the work of the prophets. That's one thing he did. Ephraim and Judah aren't doing that right now. Very few. Very few. And if they knew what the prophets said, they wouldn't be doing the feasts right now in Mystery Babylon. But that's what they're doing. So this word is not just 
my word is not just reaching the United States of America. It's reaching Australia, the UK, Africa. There's a bunch of people in Africa very interested into hearing, hearing these things. They're coming up with a list of questions. They follow Torah, but they're not allowed to do the feasts, and they're starting to see that. Other people see it. And the reason why, this is what they're doing. Because their attitude, and you can blatantly hear it out of some of these so-called Torah followers, they aren't listening to the Torah. They're listening to a portion of the Torah. Just a Torah portion. They don't have the full instruction. Ephraim has a curse against them. They're going into tribulation. All you have to do is read Hosea to see that. Judah's with them. They're both going to fall. But in Mystery Babylon. So separate them. As a, that's Mystery Babylon. Judah and Ephraim are going to fall together. Why? Because they refuse to warn their people. Fear, you know, feeding their own belly rather than feeding the lost sheep. So here's how it goes. There's another group called, okay, so many are called and few are chosen. That's what Yeshua is talking about. Is it end days prophetic event that's going to take place right before the destruction of mystery Babylon. And then great is the fall of that house, narrows the gate, straight is the gate, narrows the path, few be that find it, and broad is the gate to destruction. Now the good news is, is at the end of Hosea, you're going to see that even though God spoke against Ephraim and he was quite chapped at his wickedness his pride it's the drunkards of Ephraim okay so anytime you you see the thing you see even in the it's amazing if you really analyze this they would have known in the church that Ephraim was the United States back in say the 50s or whatever okay so they went up even earlier than that so what did they do they created the prohibition because they didn't want to be drunk the thing is it's a spiritual drunkenness and it's pride now the great whore and her many daughters are filled with pride, okay? That pride, they can't shake it because of the one, the one thing, that the one commandment that all these Ephraimites, USA, Torah believers cannot shake, and Judah neither. Covetousness. The pride is just astounding. The envy, the pride. That's why they bicker with each other about pronouncing Paleo-Hebrew. They're casting... These are, this is why the watchman of Ephraim is told, if I put a stump, if God puts a stumbling block in front of them and you don't warn them, their blood's on your hands. So I'm just going to straight up tell you, their stumbling block is covetousness and they're coveting after the feasts <coughs> in a profane land and they're making no difference between the holy and profane. And they have no education on this and they will not repent. Maybe a few will. Maybe a few. The unjust steward that repents is those guys that repent. But the more, more than likely, when, alas, alas, when Mystery Babylon falls, it'll be the surrounding Israelites from other nations where the God scattered them to the four corners of the earth speaking one language, which is English. These guys are pushing Paleo-Hebrew, but the lost sheep of the house of Israel are all going to speak one language and they're scattered to the four corners of the earth. That's how dense these, these people are to hear because of their own pride. You know why? Because they're feeding their own bellies, trying to save their... It's for their own gain. So when God poured out his spirit, it went right to their head. That's why they're charging money to do the feasts. And, you know, they're just... Uh, uh, they're acting exactly like the Christian church. They go back. Even though God pulled them out, they go back to the drunkards of Ephraim. The behavior of the apostate church. That... The apostate church was created by Mystery Babylon, the United States of America. And so their ways, they pushed on the rest of the world. So that's why they have so many denominations, so many denominations, and it was them that God is, and God's going to hold them responsible for this. So great is the slaughter of, of the United States of America. And it's because she sits a queen. She thinks she's the bride. Now, Yeshua says, that the children of the of the kingdom that were supposed to come to the wedding, they were bid to go to the wedding, they didn't get to come in. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Then when the second exodus takes place, it's a three and a half year period where the woman goes in the wilderness. When that takes place, the seats are empty. There's nobody there because they should have been there, but 
They chose the ways of mystery Babylon with their pride. So that when the second exodus takes place, then the harvest workers are going to go out to the streets and just take all the sick and the lame and the, you know, because they didn't know God. They're going to be taught the ways of God through the second exodus. And that's the way that that part of the story goes. Now, Judah, 2,000 years, the Lion of Judah told them, go find the lost sheep. What did they do for 2,000 years? Diddly squat. They just got puffed up. They got punished by God. World War II is a punishment. But they're blaming everyone else. And we'll never let this happen to us again. See, even what's going on right now, it's ordained. Now, if you want any proof about this and you've never seen me before, you go to Ezekiel 24 and it's all about Jerusalem getting, uh, getting attacked. At the same time that happens, the watchman's wife dies. She's taken by a demon. And then the people are going to have to do everything that the watchman did. Well, that already happened. And I'm telling you, Ezekiel 24 happened December 19th last year, just recently. So that happened to me. And I've been warning them, even in, in my channel, to stop doing the feast for probably about a year, I would say. You get the meat in due season. See, God raises up his servants. They know what's going on. That's a clue. You may not like it. That's no problem to me. My face is hard against a mystery Babylon nation. He doesn't raise up watchmen to warn somebody who's not about to get destroyed. Why do you think you're going to get destroyed? Because of your pride and you think that you're a queen. It's your clues. You've destroyed God's word with all your many denominations. It's confusion and God is not the author of confusion. So what nation did that? The United States. So her smoke's coming up forever and she's going to be the inhabitation of demons. That's what's going to happen. And they were God's people, but they chose to go in a different direction. And it's because of their pride and covetousness and they, they won't even tell you to keep the commandments at all. Not at all. Not one of them. Judah won't go out and try to find the lost sheep in fact, right now, they're saying there is no two houses, and they're adamant about that. So there's prophecy all about the evil family as well. And every one of Judah that vexes against Ephraim is going to get cut off from amongst the people as well, and that's Isaiah 11. And you can see other stuff about Judah and what they're doing. If you want to go look in prophecy, like Jeremiah 7, you take a, take a look, uh, go on the internet, and have a look at what Mount, uh, Mount of Olives looks like with all the bones sprawled up the Mount of Olives. And then read Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. And then listen to what it's called, the evil family. That same evil family is mentioned in Mal or Micah chapter 2. Their Sabbath is polluted and they're removing the borders of the northern kingdom of Israel. They're destroying a man and even his heritage. That's Judah doing that. They're going to get punished for that. They don't listen. They don't know their Torah at all. Neither does Ephraim. Well, to a certain degree they are, because the Holy Spirit poured out onto them, many, onto many. But what did they do? They went and started doing the feasts, like I said, and they wouldn't warn their, their, their brothers, the Christian churches. They think that they're special, and they're really, it's because they're cowards, and they won't go out and do it. Now, there's certain people that I know that are, that are in my group, my brothers and sisters, they're going from church to church to church right now, getting banned from all kinds of churches. All they're doing is trying to bring repentance, looking for the lost sheep. So the way this story goes is all of Ephraim, who's not doing this in their own country, it's going to be required at their hand, and they're going into tribulation. And you're not going to get away from that. You just have to read Hosea to see that. So because Ephraim made many altars to sin, altars are going to be unto him to sin. That means to continue sin. They looked at the great things of God's law as a strange thing. That means you're not allowed to do the feasts in, unless God's name is in the inheritance. 
They say, oh, we're the temple, we're the temple. Then get your temple over to Jerusalem on the right day and do the feast because they make no difference between the holy and profane. And they don't listen to prophecy where God took these things away from them. In fact, the northern kingdom of Israel in Isaiah 43, it says, when have I required these, these feasts of you? I have not required them, but I have to serve you with my si your sins or you're serving me with your sins or I'm serving you with your sins. That's what God says. He did not require the feasts of the northern kingdom of Israel. But Ephraim is an unwise son. Judah is rottenness. Ephraim a moth. Like, this is what's going on in the, in the book of Hosea. The watchman of Ephraim is with his God. That's me. And all the other brothers that are, and sisters that have raised up. All the watchmen will see eye to eye when Zion returns. We deal the corn, we give them the wine, but by the right hand of God, he says, you will no longer, for what you've worked for, you will no longer give these people your corn and wine, which you labored for. But those who listened, they're going to rejoice in the, in the kingdom. And guess what it calls them? The redeemed of the Lord. Well, the redeemed of the Lord are going to sing the new song of Moses. See, Ephraim is so foolish. The Torah believers of Ephraim, they're shepherds. It, it's all going to be required at their hands because their feet in their own bellies. They think that Exodus chapter 15 is the song of Moses that they're going to sing because they're so dense to Deuteronomy. The new song of Moses is all about the four horsemen judgment and his sons and daughters being angry at a foolish nation. Well, that foolish nation is Ephraim. That foolish nation is Mystery Babylon. That foolish nation is Judah, where they all dwell together. Because that foolish nation destroyed the whole world with their lies. And they don't take responsibility for it. That's why God's mad. Can I speak any more straight? See, you guys are so used to people tickling your ears and that's what you want. The Bible tells you all of these things. Prophesy to us smooth things. Tickle our ears. Don't tell us the truth. Prophesy deceits. And they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that's the sign of the end. See, especially to Judah, you're supposed to sharply rebuke the fables. Notwithstanding. See, the fables are full-blown. Everybody's an absolute idiot now when it comes to the word of God. Why? Because you're so involved in the ways of this world. They've got you trapped in covetousness, keeping up with the Joneses, envy. That's all that, all that stuff. That's what your society produced because the devil runs you. That's the great whore, right? Jezebel and Ahab. And all who tolerate Jezebel and Ahab, you might as well include Ahab into that. By the way, who throws Ahab, or who throws Jezebel out the window to the dogs where she's devoured? The eunuchs. They're the servants of God. They hold the key of David. These are things that they're not going to understand. They reject the key of David because the great things of God's law, they count it as a strange thing. That's the United States of America Torah followers. They don't know what the key of David is. Most of them reject that the day begins at dawn. The day star rises in your heart. God always showed up in the morning. Right in their Torah. The day begins at dawn right in Genesis. He creates all day long. Then there's sunset. Then there's sunrise. They don't want to look into the Strong's Concordance and look what the Hebrew word even means. Because they're caught in their traditions. They can't understand that the feasts are over two days, like the Passover and Atonement. The Atonement's on the 10th day. But start to observe it on the 9th at evening. You see, they can't hear that. They can't hear it because they're not right with God. They're doing the feast and God accepts them not. So this is the promise. He's going to withdraw his Holy Spirit, which he gave them. Many are called, few are chosen. The few that are chosen are the ones that the Holy Spirit does not withdraw from. So the many called, the Holy Spirit is removed from them. And then they go into captivity. It's right in Hosea. It's also in Isaiah. So, the Beatitudes are written to those who inherit the kingdom. But Ephraim is not mentioned in the 144,000. 
because they're doing the feasts. That's why Ephraim is not mentioned in the 144,000. Joseph is, Ephraim is not, because they're doing the feasts. Now, the Beatitudes are about those guys who actually warn Ephraim not to do the feasts. So those who inherit the kingdom, who are they? They're mourning for Zion. Okay, Zion gets saved. They're the ones that are redeemed of the Lord out of mystery Babylon. Now, the story is, it doesn't end there for Judah and Ephraim, but all of a sudden, as they start going into, after it tells you that the watchman of Ephraim is with his God, but the prophet is a fowler and a snare, all, hatred in the house of his God, this is those people. Then they go into tribulation. All of a sudden, Judah smartens up, and Judah is now with his God. Ephraim is still a silly dove that doesn't understand. So Judah, during tribulation, is going to help Ephraim come to, to wisdom about this. And that's why 1 Thessalonians 4, when you look at Isaiah's version of this, these guys couldn't understand. Their teachers will no longer be scattered to the four corners anymore. That's the watchman, by the way. See, the watchmen are given authority by God. And let no man despise the authority that's been given you. See, we're telling the truth. And you know what? As soon as it happens, you're going to see it. Whether you're on the good side or the bad side of it. Because we already I can just lay it out in, in, in simple terms. This is the story. I could tell you a whole bunch of prophecy that you can't understand and speak in a stammering lip. But I'm just telling you straight up in your own language, in your own terms, what's going on right now. Because it's been going on forever. Well, since 2008, people have been waking up even. Even before that. It's been going on for a long time. Many called. But the harvest workers at the end, the 11th hour harvest workers, that didn't work through the heat of the sun because the ones that did are going to get envious and then and Yeshua says, go your way. The last will be first and the first will be last. So these guys, they're putting stumbling blocks in front of the people. They're causing them to go straight. Here's the good news. Those who, those who have ears to hear. On the dark and terrible day of the Lord, first of all, the Christians are the ones saying, in Amos chapter 5, right? They're saying, God's saying, woe to you that desire the terrible day of the Lord. To what end is it to you? Is it not darkness and not light? So there's a group of people that are desiring it, right? Same place. They think they're getting pre-trib raptured, and they're not. They are wicked. The tares and the, and the wheat are sown together. However, what was I going to say about that now? Oh, yeah, the sheep. Now, there's a group of people in America that are going to be deemed the woman. Now, the woman, the lost sheep, they are going to get saved anyways. And the reason why is for his servant's sake as well and his name's sake. Okay? So, but for his servant's sake, because his true servants, which let's say just roughly, say a million people got called, 144,000 are going to have no guile on their mouth. But what they're going to do is it's going to be the little, the little group going up against the big group to try to tell the truth. Meanwhile, all those guys are all telling you all different kinds of things. The feasts on this day. You have to do the calendar. The Sabbath bounces around all over the place. All this different stuff. You've got to speak Paleo-Hebrew or you're not going to heaven. That's the way they, they got that attitude. And they fight. And they cause confusion. And the poor people are sitting there trying to learn. And all they see is all this discord. And by the way... Once the house is swept clean, which is when the Holy Spirit wakes these people up, seven more, more wicked ser uh, evil servants or evil spirits enter into that man. This is to fulfill the true proverb that it would have been better that they didn't know about the royal law than to go back because the latter end of them is worse than the beginning. And this is the dumb dogs or the dogs that return to their vomit and the sow that goes back to the shit. The wallowing in the mire. That's what they're doing right now. Then the seven more sp evil spirits enter into them. And the one that God hates is sowing discord with your brothers. And that's what they're going to do. So the Beatitudes, when you analyze the Beatitudes, it's talking about those who have a humble con contrite spirit. The humble contrite spirit is those who sing. 
if he wanted sacrifice, I would have given it to him. But he doesn't want sacrifice. Ephraim is choosing that which he delights not, which is sacrifice. I prefer mercy, not sacrifice. He wants the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But because they reject the knowledge, he rejects them and their children. Now, when he says that, it's referring to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14 is saying when they go into tribulation, they can only save themselves at that point. The, the special gift that he gives to his good servants is that their children are all saved and they're going to be called the blessed of the seed. And, they're all, they're, and all the Gentiles are going to acknowledge the children of the servants of God. But the evil servants, they can once they go through the tribulation, they'll be able to save themselves. But that's it. That's been taken away. And they're going to have to work way harder. So this is the point about the Ezekiel Watchman in 24. So the wife gets taken away by a stroke. There's reasons to all that. I won't get into that. And then it's said to the people who escape, you now have to do everything that the watchman did through tribulation. So that's part of the story. It's quite interesting, isn't it? See, when you live it out, when you're actually one of the characters in the story that's living it out and the one warning the people, it's, it's astronomical. Or that's not even the right word. The stupidity is astronomical, what I see in America, compared to what this book says. And I can't even comprehend. How in the world do they not see this? How do the people following the Torah who received the Holy Spirit not see this? Because they're not following the Torah. Because they can't get rid of covetousness. Now, I know this, that God has the special people that this book records inside that country. I don't care who goes up against me. I'm not dismayed at your faces, your looks, or your words. I know God's people are there, and every tongue that rises against the servants of God, we are going to condemn. So be careful what you say. That's right in the Word of God, and you guys in the United States of America... It's unbelievable how arrogant you really are. See, you don't know that because you're surrounded by the same people. When you step out and you're on the outside looking in, because you guys are in that glass house. <clears throat> you see, although Ephraim's waking up, he still acts like the rest of them still to this day. So here's the thing. Those who lead into captivity are the ones doing the feasts. Those who fight with the sword are the ones that are bearing arms. They're going to fight. <clears throat> it's already prophesied. That's in uh, Jeremiah, no, Isaiah 8, Isaiah 28. You know, you make the comparisons all about Ephraim. Ephraim and Judah dwell together. And Judah's no better, even worse. Judah's more treacherous than backslidden Israel. Two houses, okay? Judah won't tell you there's two houses. They reject that. They reject God's word. So just in that, they hate their neighbor. They hate their brother. And if you hate your brother, you're cooked. Judah's going to learn a big lesson in the United States of America, but they're filled with covetousness too. You see, if you don't correct yourself in the simple things, God's going to punish you. And remember, he hates this generation more than any past generation that's ever existed, aside from maybe in the days of Noah. But, it will be as in the days of Noah, won't it? And then they're not going to listen. And then the flood's coming. And this flood, more than likely, is fire. And that's why the, the bones are very dry of Ephraim. So there's a punishment to Ephraim. There's a punishment of Ephraim and Judah, where they dwell together. The head of the fat valleys, well... The head of the fat valleys is talking about the United States of America, but, you know, there's this great valley and the bones are very dry. Ezekiel 37. Speak to these bones, Ezekiel. So there's a punishment coming. They're going in, and it says, that's why, again, 1 Thessalonians 4, those who survive tribulation, the sleeping drunks, that's Isaiah, 
Paul's just in 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 First Thessalonians four. He's just talking about what Isaiah twenty eight to thirty three is talking about. The spirit of sleep and drunkenness. I get, he gives them up to a strong delusion. He brings their their imaginations upon them because they weren't listening to those who trembled at his word. The poor spirit, contrite heart that trembles at his word that doesn't do the feasts to us. Doing the feast is like cutting a dog's neck and killing a man and offering swine's blood. Right there in Isaiah 66. Then they're going to go and speak evil against us, which they do right now. And it's going to be, and then they glory God, and it's going to be to their shame and our joy. And then that we're caught up to the throne, and the man child is born. The man child is 144,000. It's the daily sacrifice also, which is communication. Not burnt offerings. The daily sacrifice is the communication of those who, that's your fulfilling the royal law. That's the communication. That's in Hebrews. They don't know that. They refuse to do it because they're cowards. You know, they're cowards. They're just trying to save themselves. <laughs> they're hiding their talent in the ground. Depart from me, you wicked, evil servant. They're not sharing their talents and coming to the, the bullseye of the Torah. The bullseye of the Torah is that God magnified the law and made it honorable. So you don't, you got to go rebuke your neighbor like the apostles did. Nobody wants to hear that that's what they were doing. Paul said, those who sin in the church rebuke in front of everybody so that people learn to fear. That's called accountability. Nobody wants to be rebuked in front of everybody for doing Sabbath on Friday night. It's embarrassing. So, but when they stop doing that, then people go in all different directions, don't they? And the truth gets lost. And everybody does that which is right in their own eyes. See, that's a direct quote from Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verses 25 to 31. They do that which is right in their own eyes, is quoting Deuteronomy 12 about them doing the feasts in a perverted land, in a polluted land. They make no difference between the holy and profane. They make no difference between the holy and profane land, nor do they make difference between the holy and profane day. But what they do do is justify themselves. They're unjust. And they say, God sees our heart. And I'm telling you, yes, he does. And that's why you're going into tribulation. Because you got to learn a lesson about covetousness and pride to get rid of that American pride in Mystery Babylon. The great whore with USA right on her forehead and all the many harlots that put USA first before they put the word of God. And that's, you're giving up to your pride. The drunkards of Ephraim. Isaiah 28. Which is, if you knew all the connections to Isaiah 28. But here's the thing. In order for prophecy to be true, they can't repent. So... My message is just to establish it. When it happens, then they will know. You see? Now, the other group of people that actually listen to the words of the watchman and fill their vessels with, well, God's word, that's all it is. They're the ones that get to rejoice. In fact, I will read that. So they, these guys have worked hard, digging in the Bible, warning the people, and they're giving out their corn and wine. And God says, I swear by my right hand that you will no longer give to those people what you work so hard for. But those who listen to you will receive it, and they're the ones that are the redeemed of the Lord. Now, that's the good part of the story. Blessed is he who brings good tidings. But you see, in order for me to bring good tidings, I need to let you know what not to be part of. And I can't stop it. They're going to do what they're going to do because prophecy has to be fulfilled. But you guys in other countries that are woke up, like Africa, UK, everywhere, wherever you are, stop doing the feasts and watch what happens to Mystery Babylon. And when you say, alas, alas, you wait on the Lord. Blessed are those who wait on the Lord. Ephraim, he was an unwise son. And Judah, too. And they went and got presumptuous. This is in Psalm 19. Uh, you want to know? I'll tell you right now. If you got a... If you really want to hear this, you read it yourself. You don't listen to man. You go read what it says. This is exactly what they're doing. You're going to need Psalm 34. 
Psalm 19, Psalm 34, Psalm 37, Psalm 51, and pay attention to what's said in Isaiah 66, 65 and 66, okay? It's mingled there. You're talking in there about the Christian church and Ephraim doing Ephraim and Judah in the United States doing the feasts, okay? And all you guys in the surrounding countries where you're scattered to the four corners of the earth, tell your people, quickly write a check for half. Otherwise, that punishment's coming to you as well, and you're going to be removed of your stewardship. Because those shepherds in Ephraim, it's going to be required at their hand for the punishment coming. And it'll be required at their hand for the lost sheep that are going into the wilderness anyways. Because God is gracious to his servants, and he's not going to destroy them all. Because the servants are begging for the salvation of the people in the United States of America. And everywhere. But the, the beginning of all things starts with Mystery Babylon. Isaiah 62. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O New Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of Yehovah, keep not silence, and give him no rest until he establish, till he make New Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat to thy enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink thy wine for that which thou hast labored. The wine is the Holy Spirit. You labor for the Holy Spirit because you correct yourself and you dig into the word of God. Not many people do that. I don't even need to, I don't need to be boasting about this, but just for to prove it to you, this book has been thoroughly examined for 10 years. Because he asked me to be a watchman, whether you believe that or not. But I mean, he asked me to be a watchman because I grew up in the Christian church. So I know, and he, he, he showed me all this stuff. He showed me the lies. I had to go through the, get rid of the cognitive dissonance too, all right? But that's what everybody has to do. And if you don't, I'll keep reading. But they that have gathered it, the corn and the wine, they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they shall have brought it together, or all have, and they that have brought it together shall drink in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, the gate, the narrow gate. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones. Lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, the daughter of Zion. Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and the, and the work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be caught, sought out a city, not forsaken. So, you're not going to see that unless you see watchmen first. That's how stupid people are in the church. The return isn't going to come unless watchmen are warning first because the whole world's deceived by mystery Babylon. It doesn't even make a difference if you think that the United States, that's a funny number. It doesn't even matter if you don't think, it doesn't matter who you think mystery Babylon is, they've already deceived the whole world. That means you're deceived. So you need to come out of her. Come out of her, my people. That was your Messiah who told you that. That's including the rest of the world. Whoever hears this message. And it's your obligation, honestly, to share this video because even if you don't know what's, what's being spoken of here, I do, and the people you share it with will have a chance to repent from this nonsense. The great whore, what is she doing? She's doing Christmas and Easter. These are all pagan things. They've made many altars to sin, Ephraim. So altars are going to are, are gonna be on him to continue sinning because he becomes presumptuous and starts doing the feasts. They still tolerate that woman, Jezebel. See, all the wives got Christmas taken away from them, so what do they do? They just replace it with God's feasts. So their mindset's about Christmas, really. They're just, they just whitewashed their sin. And God told them, no, 
This is a time of mourning, lamentation, and woe. Here's the proof. Blessed are those who mourn. Right there in the Beatitudes. These guys aren't mourning. The watchmen are mourning. These guys, they're feasting. The Beatitudes are not written to the feasters. So, that's why Ephraim is not included in the 144,000. You see? He's an unwise son. Foolish. Because of ego. You see it. Just go on TikTok and listen to the Torah people defending the feasts. Just do it. Listen, I got brothers and sisters in, in the little group that we have that used to be a part of all that stuff. And they are very grateful that somebody was brave enough to go and tell the truth to them. And now they, and you know what they do? They pay it forward. All those other people still do in the feast. Some of them, these so-called leaders, they're sitting there still trying to dupe people saying they don't have to, they don't have to go out and look for the lost sheep at all. Just let them burn. This is the Torah movement telling the, the Christian church, just let them burn. That we're, they're not like us. We're better than them, honestly. Yeah, and for that reason, they're going into tribulation. I don't know names. But I know that they talk against me. See, all these people know who I am. But I only got a few followers. How do they know? Because the word gets out and God's hand is in this. See, the seers are hidden. You don't know that. The, the seers are hidden. God ain't gonna, God ain't gonna, he's gonna get my word out, but there's a hedge around my house. But you know why? Because I have to do the will of God. He's not gonna let anything happen to me. That's why I speak boldly like a lion. I trust this word even when it comes to him talking about me. And this is exactly what these people do. Watch it. Go and find it. Even if it's you, watch what happens to you. Thou that are afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, those who mourn will be comforted. The Beatitudes. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children." That means you're fulfilling the royal law before tribulation begins. Because those who fulfill it after, they can only save themselves. In righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near thee. You know why this is? Same thing as 1 Thessalonians 5. Because you know the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night... Wrath is not appointed unto you. The same thing as Isaiah 62. You see, so right now we get rid of all this covetous and nonsense that this world of mystery Babylon created. We put it aside. We seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and all those things get added unto us. And he protects us to warn you people. And the wrath of God is not appointed unto his servants. But I'll tell you what's going to happen to the people that go up against his servants in this chapter as I keep reading it. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. He's talking about the people. They're going to gather together, but he's not with them. Whoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waster to destroy no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. So, I suggest you try to comprehend why we have the key of David, if you haven't figured that out. See, the key of David is given them so that they are given a little help in their spirit, because he shows you these great things of God's law, and they're not counted as a strange thing. Because we give all glory to God when we seek his righteousness, his kingdom. Remember, the secrets of the kingdom are revealed to those who understand the parables. Ephraim doesn't understand Luke 16, the unjust steward. But I'll tell you this, Ephraim isn't the be-all, end-all. 
Ephraim isn't even part of the 144,000. So I'm talking to my brothers in Africa, in everywhere, Europe, everywhere around the world. Because Ephraim is unwise and so is Judah going into punishment with him. Because they wouldn't listen. They got their noses up in the air. You think Judah knows more about this than me? Nope. Find me one. Find me one. Any rabbi. They're in their delivery. Old rabbis in the ancient time. Yes. even admit that the Sabbath begins at dawn. They know, but they are, they went to Babylon and then they kept those traditions. They never got rid of them. And no weapon formed against the servants of God shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against them in judgment, they condemn them and that's the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of God because who's going to go out and do the work who's going to go up against 330 million people by himself I will raise one up from the north that's what's going on who knows the Bible better than all of America put together for your sake to so that you will go up against me that's the whole purpose the men and women that rode with me before, they got shown marvelous things of his law. And look at them, look at them with their mouths now. They made a big blunder because we're coming back. See what happens when people don't believe the Bible? Well, you see, the, the clock is almost over. Are you afraid? Well, you should be. Then they that feared the Lord sp spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance for the northern kingdom of Israel was written. Before him that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. And they shall be mine. Those who do not deny the name of the name have the key of David. Nor do they deny his patience. While those who wait, why are they doing the feasts? That's why they don't have the key of David. And they shall be mine, says the Lord. This is all talking about the same thing. Who's going to be his? Those who are the servants. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, I will spare them. The wrath of God isn't upon them. They're not appointed to wrath. In, in Isaiah 66, it says... New Jerusalem is going to be saved and those who love them. Well, if you hate those who are the elect, you might as well, you might as well have a party because you're going to hell. Because you're going up against God's will. May God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive all these people that trespass against us which is why we even warn them instead of stoning them and fighting them physically we warn them we don't bear a grudge we have to go our faces are made hard against them but in the end what do you think is going to happen the will of God not your will a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord which means all Ten Commandments, including covetousness, and thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. And they shall return and discern. They're going to return because they get caught up to the throne. Zechariah 3. These are men wondered after. A brand plucked out of the fire. 
They come back as archangels and destroy the earth. The wrath of God comes through them because of the way they were treated by you. Even if it's not me, this is still what's going to happen with them. It's just funny I know about it. They just discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. So why would they be coming back to see who serves and who serves not? Because they're going to be monitoring Ephraim. Their teachers are not going to be hidden anymore. They're going to be helped with a little help through tribulation. And if they don't listen, they're probably going to get destroyed. Because through the tribulation, they're going to be able to offer their own life. Their heads are going to get chopped off. That's why in 1 Thessalonians 4, they're still called our brothers. Probably because we forgave them of all their wickedness, even when they killed your wife because of their slander and their rising up of demonics. Some people won't be forgiven, I'm pretty sure. However, the, there's going to be certain people that will be because they make it through the tribulation. And you can read that in Hosea. Well, there is a slaughter, though. There'll be many, many bodies on the streets and weeping and wailing. And the things that happen to women and the punishment they got to go through, it's reflective of their... It's kind of like this. The punishment, for instance, for women who wear makeup is absolute torturous torment in hell. So... Because God is merciful, instead he puts them through rape and torture in the, in the flesh so that they repent and instead of going to hell. Because in hell, it's going to be even worse than what's going to happen to them when they go through the punishment coming through tribulation. So they have an opportunity to repent through harsh punishment. That's how God works. Just, just so you know. Had they repented now, and they see right now, you could just freely give up your covetous ways, clean your act up, whiten your robe, get rid of all that stuff, quit, quit whoring with the ways of the world, and become a servant of God, fulfill the royal law, and you'll do well. Being the time we live in. So he's asking his people, and he's got his spirit pouring onto you right now, giving you the power and strength and courage to do that. But God hates a coward. So he, he, that's why he's angry at Ephraim, because they're a bunch of cowards down there. They think they're tough, all American, big chest sticking out, but they're a bunch of cowards. They can't even stand up against their women. They will come back and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. This is, this is the 144,000 returning. For behold, the day comes that you sh it shall burn like an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as the calves of the stall and you shall tread down the wicked and they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. It's not Sinai. If you go to Horeb, then you're new Jerusalem. If you go to Sinai, then you're under Hagar's curse. And the children of Hagar are many. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with his statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse, which is tribulation. Like it's, I'm absolutely 100% ashamed of all Christian churches that don't believe this Bible. 
This is talking about John the Baptist teaching everything at Mount Horeb, which is the Ten Commandments, and they still never got that. Every single denomination in that slut whore, Mystery Babylon, is telling the people not to break the Ten Commandments, or that they don't have to keep the Ten Commandments and the law is done away with. Sacrificial law is what Christ ended, not what was taught at Horeb. They're two different places. Close together, yes, but two different places. They're six miles apart. God came down six miles away when they're standing at Horeb. They made a verbal agreement with them. And then they walked to Mount Sinai to get it in stone. The agreement was already made. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And then right away, they already broke. They didn't even get it in stone yet and they already broke the covenant. You see? How can they break a covenant unless they get it in stone first? Because they already made a verbal agreement. So they broke the covenant and nothing else was added except for the Ten Commandments. And what do they do right away? They go make a graven image. The same thing everybody in the Christian church is doing to worship God. They're graven images. And honestly, like that's how stupid people are because they justify their wickedness. That's why Mystery Babylon, and they not only did they do that in the United States of America, they turned it into this big, huge event. Then they pushed it on everybody in the world. Enticed them. Do you guys understand how responsible God is holding that whole nation for? That's why he's destroying the world. Love it or leave it. It's still going to happen, and it's happening. going to happen very soon. You know why it's going to happen very soon? Because I'm talking. That's why. Because Ephraim is doing the feast. That's why. Because Judea is in war with Iran and its surrounding neighbors right now. Because the Ezekiel watchman was killed. Because... There's 40 to 50,000 denominations in the United States of America. Because sin is so bad, he recompenses the sins under the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. That means it gets worse and worse and worse. And by the end of it, your women rule over you and your children are your oppressors. And I mean, so I feel sorry for the younger women because they didn't know any difference. They just woke up or got born and all their mothers are all dressed like harlots. So they just followed into suit. I'll tell you, my little girl, I keep her from that. I don't want her to be like any American woman. I want them to be godly women, my daughters. My oldest daughter is a makeup artist. She won't even wear makeup anymore. I didn't even know it was a sin when I put her through school. But I know now, and that's what you do. You repent. But people can't repent. Why? Because of their pride and their arrogance. And then they'll even go and start destroying. And then that seven more demons enter into those people, and they start to sow discord, and bye-bye. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times. But that's the short and skinny about the wickedness of people as a collective group. Now, people in the surrounding nations have no excuse. You guys may have started in the United States, but Canada's no different. The UK's no different. Australia's no different. They're all filled with wickedness, claiming to run, to have the word of God and obey it. All those pastors is going to be required at their hands. All the shepherds that got raised up, it'll be required at their hands. Hell hath enlarged herself. We are delivered to do these abominations. Closing your ears to prophecy is like shooting yourself right in the face with a shotgun. Listen, you see what I'm doing right now? Warning people? Messiah says to us, when he's about to return, he gives us advice. Not advice, he gives us a commandment. 
Hi, Munker. You can use this one, maybe. It's the, I probably the same card. But of the day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch. Be a watchman. So he's telling you, you have really have no choice. You either watch or it's going to get ugly for you. Watch and pray, or at least pray. Pray alongside with the, those who are watching. Work together. May they become like one, right? That's the prayer Yeshua says to the Father. I don't pray for the world. I pray for those who become like one and are sanctified in the word. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. So what he's saying to you, if you don't watch and pray, I'm not going to let you know. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. So he gave authority to his servants to watch and pray. Watch, be a watchman. He gave you the authority, and if God's with you, who can be against you? Yeah, they're going to say bad stuff. But you see, even when you talk about the Beatitudes, when all those guys are going up against you, Ephraim's going to be trodden underfoot. The same thing as the calves in the stall, trodden underfoot. We just read it. The same thing as in the Beatitudes. When the, they lose their saltiness, <coughs> it's only good to be, it's just to be cast into the fire and trodden underfoot. Beatitudes. Because we're warning Ephraim and Judah. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Daddy, That's I the watchman of Ephraim. Daddy, can I have this please? No. Mm -hmm. Watch ye therefore... Because you know not when the master of the house comes at evening, midnight, cock crowing, or in the morning. Lest he come suddenly and find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all watch. So what he says unto the porter, he says unto all watch. So you do it, lest he comes unto you like a thief in the night. But to you, brethren, this is the difference. Look at, for instance, 1 Thessalonians 4 is written to Ephraim. 1 Thessalonians 5 is written to the servants that do the work. The few be that, that are called, that are, that are chosen. So he lets you know. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need I write unto you, because you already know. You know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. For when they, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So go to Hosea and read this. It's about Ephraim. Hosea like chapter 10 or 11. Because he's an unwise son, he didn't listen. He wouldn't go and look. He wouldn't want. Look it. You're... But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and of the children of the day. The day begins at dawn. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. This is Isaiah 28, 29, 30. Let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. Not drunk like the drunkards of Ephraim. Watch and be sober. The opposite of watching is drunkenness. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, be drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and for a helmet, and the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yeshua Messiah, who died for us, that whether we... Wake or sleep, we shall live together. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as you also do. <coughs> See, he already knows what we're doing. Like in my Sabbath gathering, this is exactly what we always do. He already knows. How does Paul already know this? Because he knows the scriptures. He knows prophecy about what's happening to us. And so do I. And so do my brothers and sisters. We beseech you, brethren, 
to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Daddy. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. See none that say, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and among, among all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Yeshua Messiah concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearances of evil. And they, and the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Yeshua Messiah. Faithful is he that called you. This is a calling who also will do it. This is the calling of the very elect. Daddy. Brethren, pray for us. Great Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord, this epistle be read to all the holy brethren, not to the unholy, to the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Yeshua Messiah be with, be with you all. That's conviction. May the conviction be with you all. See, I, I, all this stuff that I've been warning people for six years, it's just become, it just becomes so much more clearer every single day that they behave and, and God shows us what prophecy says about them. So the Beatitudes are super important because the Beatitudes are about the way they're going to treat us after we warn them, warn them. And then it shows you who they are in prophecy, Ephraim. Because they get trodden underfoot, because they lose their saltiness. Because their, their, their conversation is not with conviction. They're not even warning anybody in their own nation. And here's a bunch of guys outside of the nation trying to shout into America to try to warn them. So who loves who? bunch of wicked people treat us like crap because we tell them the truth and we're not even American put that in your pipe and smoke it because God is against the United States of America big time remember the generation of God's wrath starts with the most wicked nation who thinks they sit a queen and the blood of all the prophets is coming on to them they are the children of the prophets. They won't listen to the prophets. Acts 3. They won't listen to the refreshing of the covenant. They won't listen to what Yeshua said. They made up their own Messiah, Antichrist. They made their own guy up with all their, their Christmas Jesus guy. Yeshua is the son of God. He comes in his father's name. And because you do not have the love of God in you, you're going to accept the Christmas Jesus guy and you're going into perdition. What can I do about it? That's what your Bible says. Had you.